in consultation with experts from within the Unified Command, the debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. That was Rear Admiral John Mager from the Coast Guard confirming that this outcome is the one that everybody feared in um, the loss of a vessel uh, that was lost on Sunday. All five passengers are feared dead. Yes, that effort uh, to try and find the Titan, a submersible that was exploring the Titanic, uh, is now sadly concluded. The U.S. Coast Guard says that the debris consistent with a catastrophic implosion, but still leaving many questions unanswered about how this happened, what was the failure that led to the the pressure the pressure um, of that, that caused causing that implosion. that implosion. Exactly. For more now, let's bring in Stefano uh, Brizolara. He is an ocean engineering expert and co-director of the Virginia Tech Center for Marine Autonomy and Robotics. Stefano, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to be talking Talking to you because you actually have a basis for understanding this that the rest of us don't have. First of all, just tell us about your immediate reaction to this tragedy. And when you hear the consistent with a catastrophic implosion, given the, the pressure that was on this vehicle and your understanding of engineering and robotics and marine explore, exploration, what additional insights can you provide for us? Yeah, unfortunately, the failure of the pressure hull was probably the, 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 the first uh, hypothesis that could be done. This is something that may well happen at those uh, pressure uh, uh, that you experience at those depths. Uh, you, you must uh, uh, consider that at 4,000 meters depth, uh, the pressure is uh, 400 atmosphere, which is 400 times the pressure we experience at sea level. You you pump the tires of your car at two atmospheres, so it's 200 times the pressure that is in your in in, in the tires of your car. Stefano, before uh, we hear or learn more about exactly what went wrong and. Uh... What can you tell us about just the efforts that went into this? Uh, we understand that it was a, a robotic device that detected this, that there were several uh, that were used to reach these extreme deaths uh, that here in the United States, uh, it's, it's 12,500 feet. That is the ocean floor where the, where the Titanic wreckage is. Can you talk to us a little bit about just um, what it takes, uh, how these work, and, and um, what went into identifying uh, the pieces that were found? Yeah, uh, underwater at those depths, there is no light, obviously, and the light actually can, can penetrate uh, probably maximum 20 meters uh, for a strong light. So you cannot use really light to see anything underwater. You have to use uh, acoustic waves, a sonar, the reflection of the acoustic wave that you emit, uh, come back and there is a sensor that read the distance basically from which the acoustic wave reflects. And then it, the image uh, in modern sonar with the synthetic aperture is reconstructed and it can, gives you, it can give you a pretty good image, uh, three-dimensional image even. Of the of the bottom, this is the technology we mount on our uh, autonomous underwater vehicle that are a man vehicle that can scan the surface of the sea bottom while they are traveling at a certain speed, uh, usually between two and three knots, mm, uh, on top of the bottom, and we can reach four thousand meters with our unmanned vehicles, uh, even six thousand meter. We develop a vehicle like that for a startup in Boston that then was acquired by a large company. Uh, and now they're building many more. Stefano, you know, as we're as we're learning more about this, I'm I'm struck a bit by how technology, how rapidly technology has evolved. I mean, 
the Titanic sunk in 1912. At that point, it was considered the, uh, the greatest technological achievement of its time. 75 years later, in 1985, it was discovered by Robert Ballard uh, through uh, a robotic, uh, an ROV, that was also part of what found uh, the Titan now, that part of that team. And today, in 2023, we have human exploration down to these depths, two miles below the ocean's surface. I, I'm wondering, as we're, as we're talking about this, and it just seems so incredible how quickly uh, we have made these these changes. What lessons come from this? You you teach. Uh, I, I believe you teach students about um, marine autonomy, robotics. Where where does this go? And uh, did these five lose their lives in pursuit of scientific advancement? Uh Yes, well, we teach, uh, we have a program in ocean engineering, so we teach our students actually how to design and build a large uh, naval vessel, including submarines, large submarines. This was more of an experimental uh, submersible, I would say, mm -hmm. with some new kind of material used for the pressure hull uh, for the first time, I would say, to reach those depth, uh, carbon fiber, has never been used for uh, a, a, a pressure vessel uh, to reach those depths. And there is a reason actually, because carbon fiber is much less compliant in case of uh, failure than uh, traditional steel or even titanium. Steel and titanium are ductile materials. They can deform in a plastic uh, uh, manner. And even if they uh, uh, implode and fail, they can still guarantee a certain integrity. So mm. uh, while carbon fiber breaks immediately, is fragile and it breaks in pieces, probably those pieces that they found. So, 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 I, I, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding you correctly, uh, Stefano, because we're not experts, uh, Stefano, sorry, um, but that the carbon fiber that was used in the, the submersible, the Titan, the, uh, the Titan, was that it had less integrity. Uh, it, has, it has advantages. It is lighter and uh, thinner for the same kind of uh, strength in static condition. In, let's say in case of failure where the structure heavily deforms and uh, start to curve on itself, carbon fiber doesn't uh, allow for plastic deformation. So doesn't allow for large deformation. It starts to crack and wow. completely uh, break. So well, given that this is the first time that it's being used, Stefano, is what you're saying? I mean, do you have a suspicion that perhaps this level of innovation could have something to do with why this happened? Is is this what you suspect? I mean, yeah, traditional steel or ti uh, titanium may have mitigated the, the failure, mm. perhaps. perhaps. Yes. And from what you know, how long do you think we'll have to wait to understand whether or not this, I guess, suspicion that you have is, in fact, what could have caused this catastrophic implosion? But if, if 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 it is as certain as uh, we understand from the declaration of the Coast Guard that these debris are from the pressure hull of the vessel, this is 100% mm, uh, what happened. I mean, the hull imploded. Mm -hmm. And a, a small uh, uh, lack of symmetry, a small misalignment, the, the hull was, uh, was built in two parts, at least, uh, connected by bolted connection. So... The, the smallest misalignment, the smallest uh, asymmetry can uh, start this kind of failure. And then at, at those pressures, uh, uh, everything happens very fast and in a catastrophic way, unfortunately. And just, just so I understand a little bit of the timing and what we can expect to learn uh, moving forward, do they need to bring those pieces back up? Uh, can these ROVs or what is used to bring this back up and study it closer or because of the quality of the, the cameras and the technology used, is it possible to study everything you need to learn to understand why this happened? Can that be done from the bottom of the ocean? 
Yeah, I think that it is possible nowadays to have a, a good uh, image. Let's say it's an artificial image, <laughs> but it's a good image of the uh, debris and pieces they found on the bottom, and from there reconstruct uh, what happened. Yes, I don't. I I. I I mean, they will decide, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't spend time and effort in uh, uh, retrieving the pieces from the bottom, which is a complicated, complicated maneuver because you need arms, uh, manipulators, uh, and, and probably the current vehicles cannot do that. Uh, Stefano Brizolara, thank you so much for providing your expertise for uh, uh, for all of our viewers and and us as we try and understand what happened. Thank you very much. We, we, we have some vehicles that can reach those depths and we would be happy to use them in this case. Thank you. Thank you.